It's time once again to step out, step up, and step into the Coming Out Lounge, a safe space to be you and your truth with Coming Out Coach Rick Clemens. Rick's expertise in the coming out process has helped hundreds of men and women step out of the closet to live authentically as gays and lesbians. Freeing you from the feelings of guilt and shame, Rick's heart-centered approach is loaded with bankable advice and take action tips for living powerfully on the other side of the closet door. Each week, the Coming Out Lounge brings you heartwarming coming out stories, thought-provoking insights, and diverse perspectives for living out and proud. Pull up a chair and spend an inspiring hour in the Coming Out Lounge. Stepping out, stepping up, and stepping into living your truth. Here's the host of your show, Coming Out Coach, Rick Clemens. And here we are once again. Happy Wednesday, everyone. And I just want to start by saying that today's show will have an impact on anyone, anywhere, at any time, because this is real stuff that each and every one of us, regardless of our sexuality, our age, our race, this is the sort of stuff that each one of us needs to tune into. And what am I talking about? Yesterday, we paid honor to those who were killed and lost their lives in the attacks on 9-11. And yet, just 24 hours, less than 24 hours ago, we also saw people lose their lives in attacks in Libya and Egypt at the embassies. And I'm sure within the last 24 hours, there's even been somebody who has been told they have cancer or maybe they've contracted the HIV disease. And without making this show of downer, which is not the point, it's about being prepared, about being prepared when those moments in life hit so that you know exactly what should happen, what should happen for you what should happen for your partners, your husbands, your wives, because yes, we do have husbands and wives now in the gay and lesbian community because so many states are starting to finally allow homosexuals to take those marriage vows. And this show is truly about tuning in as LGBT individuals and anyone else who happens to listen to this show and really knowing what you need to do to be prepared as your life moves forward. And I'm really happy to be doing this show because this is kind of the kickoff to a month's worth of preparing for National Coming Out Day. And as you think about coming out of the closet, there's lots of excitement and there's lots of fear around, oh my God, what are people going to think? And oftentimes the things we don't think about are the things that get lost in the shuffle. Like once I'm out of the closet and once I start dating or looking for relationships or get into a relationship, what does being in a same-sex relationship mean for me and my partner as we look to the future? How do you set up a basic will? How do you design a revocable living trust? What does it mean to have an advanced health care directive? Why would you need a durable power of attorney? So these are the things that we are going to address with a really talented guy and a really good friend of mine that I've just come to know over the last couple of months. His name is Eric A. Rudolph. He is an attorney in Palm Springs, California. Great guy, very open to sharing his knowledge, his talent, his story with us. And I'm so excited that he's here. So before we go too much further, this is the kickoff of working towards National Coming Out Day, which is October the 11th. And we're starting with How do you protect yourself legally once you come out of the closet? And if you have anything you'd like to share via Twitter or anything like that, my Twitter is at Rick Clemens, and the hashtags are pound coming out lounge and pound co lounge. And at this point, I would really, really, truly love to bring my guest forward again, Eric Rudolph. I'd love to welcome you to the show. How are you doing, Eric? Really well. Thank you. Thank you, Rick, for having me on the coming out lounge. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here, and I'm really excited to uh, give some feedback and advice and and sort of see what I can do to kind of help uh, explain and maybe put some people's minds at ease and let them know that there are simple things they can do to protect themselves and their partner and their husband, their wife, their family, their loved ones, their friends, charities they care about, and even their pets. And that's what I'm here today to do. 
Absolutely. And I think what you just described is it's very far reaching. It's not just about the one on one relationship. And especially in a world now where gays and lesbians are having families and we have assets, you know, that maybe we want to ensure that a charity can utilize once we have moved on from this experience of being a human. And before we go much further, I just want to make sure that everyone who's listening, whether you're listening live or whether you listen once the podcast is available later today, that the information we're sharing today on this broadcast is really being given to you, the listener, and the general community as information. That's what it's here for. It's information purposes only. And the best thing that you can do if you have any questions about any of this is to contact someone like Eric and really get competent legal advice around any of these areas. So I think I just covered what we needed to cover, right, Eric? Absolutely. And this is just general advice. And I recommend that anybody out there that is looking for specific estate planning advice or advice about being a registered domestic partner uh, definitely should seek out and meet with an experienced estate planning attorney, one who's knowledgeable about LGBT community issues, and, and get advice that's specific to your situation because every individual, every couple, every family, their situation is unique, and every estate plan needs to be tailored for that individual, couple, or family. So today's information is general advice that is applicable, but this is just general legal advice, and so you know, definitely shouldn't be construed as any specific advice for any specific person. So there's a legal disclaimer. Now we can get to the good stuff. There we go. And I love this because here's the thing, and I think you said it really nicely, that just like each of us are individuals and each of us has our own unique personalities, each situation that we face, whether we're a single gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, or we're coupled, or we're actually legally married or in a domestic partnership, each one of these situations is very unique. And I think this is Absolutely. something that each person has to look at is what are the unique pieces that each of us has to look at? So sitting from your seat and where you, you know, work each day, give me just like a, a unique perspective of one thing that maybe as a single gay lesbian who may have the thought, oh, I don't need to worry about this stuff. What is something they actually, and I don't like the word worry, but something they should be tuned into and put as a top priority. And a worry, I agree, is not the right word, but, but concerned, focused on. Uh, I think the, the number one thing that everybody should have, gay, straight, everyone, should have at least a basic will. And, and that is actually not that difficult, and it's something that there are several options for people out there. Because if you don't have a basic will, then the state decides who's going to get your property. Under the intestate succession laws that are governed under probate code 6401, the, the laws will say, if you don't have a will or a trust, the laws will say, here's who's going to get your property. And it may not be who you want. And if you don't have a basic will, then I can guarantee you your friends, the charities you care about, they're not going to get anything. It could end up going all to your parents, your siblings, and if you're not a registered domestic partner or you're not married in a state that recognizes it, then, you know, you're going to end up having no control over who gets your property, who's in charge of distributing your property. And, and for gay and lesbian people, it's so important because some of their families are, are very unique. They, we know it's not the typical mother, father, two children. You know, we have families that are our friends, are our family. You know, we may have a partner who we didn't register with, but they've been with us for 20, 30 years. I have clients that have been together for a long time. They never registered. If they don't make their, their wishes known and put it down in writing with at least a basic will, there's more than that, but just to answer your question, everyone should have a basic will. Protect your assets and make sure the people you love in your life, and it may not be the traditional family. It may be an untraditional family, but you know what? It's still you need to make sure that, that your rights are protected. And I think this is one of the things, and I, you know me well enough, Eric, that I work with people coming out of the closet as well as people who are stuck doing you know, life coaching in any form or manner. And this is one of the things that I find really interesting when I'm working with any of my clients, gay or straight, that this sort of stuff in finances can really get them stuck. And it can almost, I wouldn't say finances goes on the back burner, but this sort of stuff, it's always about someday. 
Oh, someday. Oh, someday. And as I said in my intro, we celebrated and honored those who lost their lives. I wouldn't say celebrated, but we honored those who lost their lives Absolutely. in 9 11. In a Absolutely. moment, in a moment, everything can be done for you, but the legacy of you may or may not live on in the way that you choose. And I think this is why it is critical for even single individuals to do exactly what you just shared. And I think as gay men, and I don't know your story, and we may have you share a little bit of your own coming out story later, but I know for me, there were moments in my life as I came through that closet door that if I had died right then and there, there was a chance that Things could have gone right to probate because I didn't have something specifically saying these go to my kids and that, you know, this wasn't supposed to go to my ex-wife and that this couldn't go to my parents. I mean, there was even a point, you know, and I'll be real raw here, that I wouldn't have wanted a damn thing to go to my parents. Now we've moved beyond that. Like a lot of people experience that. Sometimes it changes over time, but there can be a time, especially when you're in your late teens, early 20s, and you're finding your own way that... Yeah, that's not what you want. And and most people don't worry about it at that age. But there are stories, it does happen, where even young people, there was a video that was out last year called It Could Happen to You. Uh, yep. Shane Bitney Chrome put it on, on the Internet. That was about a young gay couple. I don't think they were even, I think they may be in their 20s. And one of them died, very unexpectedly. I think he committed suicide. But they had not prepared anything. And one of the messages, there were several messages in that video, but one of the messages in that video was be prepared, do something, get a basic will, a power of attorney, health care directive, so the person you love that you've committed your life to can then be a part of the decision-making process. And in this case, it was a perfect example of they hadn't done anything, and they, they were left with no alternative. His family came in and took complete control and that's why it's so important for even young people. Most people think this is something I'll deal with when I'm older, right. when I'm in my 60s or 70s. But when you're young, it's never too soon to start planning your estate. Truth with coming out coach Rick Clements. We'll be right back after these messages. I look into the window of my mind. Get the competitive edge and take your success to the next level with the Gold Medal Success Show and your host, Forrest Fisher, six-time U.S. National Gold Medalist. Tune in every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. Central, 6 Pacific, here on the Rockstar Radio Network as Forrest gives you access into the mindset of true champions and helps you apply these success principles to your life and business for immediate results. Each show will feature guest athletes and business experts who have achieved tremendous success and are ready to share their stories of struggle, glory, tragedy, and triumph, revealing tips and strategies Forrest and these guest experts use to propel themselves to world-class success. Many people live their whole lives wanting more. The Gold Medal Success Show will demonstrate that anyone can have a more fulfilling and satisfying life when they put a few basic principles into play. Make every day game day with the Gold Medal Success Show each Thursday morning at 8 a.m. Central here on the Rockstar Radio Network. Is there more living for you to do? Yes. Start living inspired. Be here for Living Inspired with Trisha Goyer. Thursday afternoons at 4, 3 p.m. Central on toginet.com. Trisha will dig deep into topics that matter most to women, inspiring women to make a change in their own lives and to make a difference in the world and maybe even deep within their own hearts. Trisha is a wife, mom, speaker, family expert, and author of 24 books. For more information on Trisha and Living Inspired, go to her website, trishagoyer.com. That's T-R-I-C-I-A-G-O-Y-E-R.com. Trisha's vision is to be the voice of hope and possibility for women of all ages. Her intention is to serve ordinary women by encouraging extraordinary things with God's help. Trisha expresses real life, real hope for real women. Is there more living for you to do? Yes. Start living inspired. Living Inspired with Trisha Goyer. Thursday afternoons at 4, 3 p.m. Central on toginet.com. Welcome back to the Coming Out Lounge with your host, Rick Clemens. And we are back. Sorry we ran long going into the break like that. We were having a little bit of a technical difficulty, but we're going to jump right back in. So right before the break, Eric was talking about 
how important this is, and I want to reiterate the name of the YouTube video he's talking about is It Could Happen to You. And these are real life, true scenarios that we come up against. Again, gay or straight, but we're going to keep the rest of the focus on the LGBT community because that's what we're all about here on the Coming Out Lounge. So we had talked about wills, Eric, and just I, I don't want to commit you to a dollar figure, but in a way, what can someone, let's kind of just start, you know, a simple will. My gut feeling says you're probably looking at what? As low as a couple hundred bucks on up from there? It, it depends. There are options for how to prepare a basic will. The state of California recognizes several different forms. You can, there are statutory forms that you can go online and print out. They're very basic and don't allow you to uh, provide a lot of options, but it's better than nothing. You can right. also do in your own handwriting, as long as you sign it and date it in your handwriting, do something what's called a holographic will, which is recognized in California as legal. I don't recommend them because they are much easier to contest for issues of fraud. Uh, but if you don't want to go to an attorney or you just you don't want to try to figure out the statutory will or where to get one, sit down in your own handwriting and write out what you want. Make sure you sign it and date it. It is better than nothing. The best thing to do is go to an experienced estate planning attorney. Talk to them about your assets, your family, who you want your beneficiaries to be, who you want your executor to be of your will, and have a a will prepared and drafted by an attorney that will have all the provisions in there to protect your rights. You know, it depends on the individual. It depends on, you know, the assets. These can run anywhere from three to $500, but it right. also depends if they want more than a basic will. Because while sure. everyone should have a basic will, they should also have the advanced health care direct and a durable power, durable power of attorney. When I prepare a will for a client, I, I offer them a will package, and I say, look, you know, you need more than just a basic will because what it happens if you get in a car accident, you go in, you're in a coma, you're incapacitated, you're not, you haven't passed away, but you're in, you can't make decisions for yourself. You can't make medical decisions or manage your finances or your property. Who do you right. want handling that if that happens? And that's a completely different topic, but it's really important. Uh, it's as important as the basic will. Uh, so, you know, it depends on what people want. Some people, they just want a will. You know, they just want to protect a particular piece of property and asset. They buy a home and they want to make sure, you know, two, I've had clients where, you know, gay couples come in, they're not registered, they're not married, but they've just recently purchased a piece of property. They want to make sure to protect their rights and make sure that in the event that something happens to one of them, the other one gets it, but they don't want to hold it in joint tenancy for various reasons. Or sure. one of them owned it beforehand and they don't want to change title to joint tenancy because that could be considered a gift for gift tax purposes, which I don't recommend that you do that unless you're purchasing the home outright from the beginning with a, a gay or lesbian partner. In that case, then, they want a basic will just to protect the property and to protect their rights and protect the, their, their partner, their, their boyfriend, their girlfriend, their, you know, the person. Their, Absolutely. Their and I think what you just brought up is something that sometimes can scare people because they're like, okay, well, you, you're saying I need a power of attorney or an advanced health care directive. And I know when my partner and I went through this and I, it was, you know, it can be a little bit, you know, you got to search inside yourself and go, okay, do I really want to make these decisions? That's if the hardest it, part, right? you know, That's the hardest part, you know. That's the hardest part. And I remember being at my grandfather's bedside when he passed, but knowing exactly the moment that we realized after he had his stroke that his medical power of attorney had kicked in. And his wishes were to be followed exactly to the T so that, quite honestly, none of us had to be put in that position. We knew exactly what his wishes were. And I think not only does it protect you, the individual, and help those hard, tough decisions get made, but it really can ease some of the burden for the family, too. Now, it depends on how you obviously put it together, but... You know, in our case, in my personal case, my partner and I have both said we're the ones to make the decision about what happens. However, we have put our wishes of what we want to happen should we be in a bad car accident and we are going to be in a vegetative comatose state. And, you know, more than likely, you know, we've gone through all that. But I think this is what makes it really hard for some people to even want to have these discussions. But you want to make those decisions. You, you want to make for you or you want to make sure that your partner 
is the one making the decisions or at least enforcing the decisions you've already made, especially when it comes to health care decisions. These are usually very personal decisions for individuals. I have gay and lesbian couples and straight couples who they, they, they don't agree on what they want. One wants to be on life support no matter what, and the other one says, pull the plug, don't keep me alive artificially. You know, it doesn't, just because two people are together doesn't mean they share the same outlook and the same views, especially when it comes to their own personal health care decisions. Those yep. are individual decisions that everyone should make for themselves. It's your body, it's your health, it's your, your medical care. And don't leave it up to a family member who, who may not agree with, with your philosophy and with your belief. Right. And, and that's why if you have a health care directive prepared, and again, a health care directive, there is basic statutory forms. The hospitals will often provide forms that you can, you can just check boxes. They don't give you a lot of options if there are specific things that you want to make sure are known, but there's better than nothing. Again, I, I would recommend being an experienced estate planning attorney and having one prepared, just like the basic will, but in the event that you don't do that, it's still better if you go and, and have something basic put down, even the statutory advanced health care directive, so that right. you don't... Something that you know you don't find yourself incapacitated with nothing because at that point then a conservatorship proceeding would be required and a family member can come in at that point and then have them declared as your conservator and start making all the decisions for you that you may not agree with. Right. I think what's important to really share here is this is about anyone in general. And I loved how you said, you you know, even in a gay relationship or a lesbian relationship, you may have one partner that says, this is what I want. And this one says, I want the pull, you know, the plug pulled. But these totally are different. those things that if it's not taken care of in advance, when you lose somebody, there's already enough trauma. There's already enough transition that's going on. Then to go add the legal mumbo jumbo, and I'm not, you know, knocking the legal profession, but that's what it becomes. No, that's okay. is all this red tape and all this stuff that now somebody who is dealing with the grief and the loss now has to go add this on. And again, I'm going to go back to my experience with my grandfather because he was so concise. There was no questions. There were and that no made it so much questions. easier for your family. Absolutely. And I, and one of the, besides the beautiful trust and inheritance that he provided for so many of us in our family, I don't even see that as the gift. What I see is the gift of him ensuring that none of us had to deal with this. Especially Absolutely like you were saying, you don't want to be, yeah, you don't, and you don't want to have to be making those decisions during times of, of stress and shock and, and grief. If you, prepare and make the decisions before, hopefully years before anybody actually has to enforce those decisions. It's so much easier to do it then because if you wait until tragedy strikes or something really bad happens, and that often is the case, unfortunately, then yep. it, it becomes a much different perspective. And, and it's really important to try to you prepare beforehand and you work with someone that helps guide you through the process so they can explain it. Because as we're saying, making the decisions is the hardest part. If you have someone to explain what your rights are. A lot of people, yep. when they come to me, they don't even understand what estate planning is. They've heard it, but they don't know what it is. They don't know what a trust is. They've heard they should have one, but they don't know what that means. They've heard about health care directives and power of attorney, but they don't really know what does that actually mean? What are the nuts and bolts? If you talk to an experienced estate planning attorney who can explain it to you, break it down, make it simple, make it digestible, so that then you can make the decisions in an informed way. And whether you're right. gay or straight, these, these are fairly universal across the board. For, but for gay and lesbian people, there are specific issues because, unfortunately, we don't have marriage equality. And so there isn't the automatic, if you're, because when you're married, your spouse automatically has rights and they're recognized in, by healthcare providers and financial institutions in ways that, unfortunately, gay and lesbian couples don't have. Now in California and some other states uh, with registered domestic partnership, it does make a difference. And you do sure. have certain community property rights here, uh, and it would be recognized. But I wouldn't rely on that because if you're a gay and lesbian couple in California, you travel to another state where they're not going to recognize it. You could be in the hospital there, and they may not let you see your, your partner. And Absolutely. if you have a health care directive that names your partner as your agent for health care, you have that form with you, and you hand that to the medical providers, they have to let you see the person. They have to recognize that you have rights. And, be, and your, your health care directive 
prepared in California would be valid in another state as long as it's properly executed in the state of California or in the state that it is executed in. So it's really important to, to not rely 100 percent on domestic partnership and community property rights and because if you go to another state, you want to make sure you have the documents that say, look, you know, God forbid anything should happen, but I am the person that's here to make decisions for my partner, for my loved one. And that's yeah, why you, you know, the preparation is key. Yeah. So we've got about a minute to go before we go to break. And I think that what you just said is really if if somebody were to tune out right now and not take anything away from this conversation we're sharing is preparation is the key and really allowing that preparation to take place and dealing with the hard choices. And we're going to when we do come back, I want to start kind of like breaking each one of these things down a little bit. We've already talked about the wheel, but I know that the healthcare directives is something that was really important to me, the revocable living trusts and, you know, the durable powers of attorney, both financial and, and medical, because it sets everything up. So we've got about a minute, Eric, to go. In that order, which of those things, obviously you said the wheel, which other two things or three things, I think you kind of already said, the powers of attorney and the advanced health care directives would be your next recommendations. Absolutely. Those are the, the documents that everyone should have. Okay. Everyone needs the basic will, a health care directive, and a durable power of attorney. Make yeah. sure the people that you want are making the decisions for you about your health care and your financial matters and your property matters. And those documents will protect your rights. A, a trust is important, and a lot of people need a trust, but not everybody needs a trust. And we can talk a little bit sure. more about the, the pros and cons of a trust. But everyone needs a basic will, a health care directive, and a durable power attorney, especially gay and lesbian people. Make sure right. your partner is the person making the decisions for you. Yeah. Okay. When we come back, we're going to get into trusts and all of that. You're listening to the Coming Out Lounge with Coming Out Coach Rick and our legal advisor, Eric A. Rudolph. We'll be right back in just a few moments. You've been listening to The Coming Out Lounge, a safe space to be you and your truth with Coming Out Coach Rick Clements. We'll be right back after these messages. I look into the window of my mind. If you're ready for a big change in your work, your career, your happiness, your life, it's time for the Million Dollar Mindset with Marla Tabaka. Monday afternoons at 2, 1 central on Toginet.com. Marla believes that with the right mindset, anything is possible. Join us as successful life coach Marla Tabaka inspires you and her clients to explore, discover, and live your dreams by developing what she calls the Million Dollar Mindset. Marla will inspire you to take action on your dreams and reveal secrets to success that will help you realize your own unique power. Tune into the Million Dollar Mindset for heartwarming stories with Marla Tabaka. Learn tips and tricks to building a successful business and unlock the secrets to creating a happier, more balanced life through abundant thinking and attraction power. Hour. For more information on the Million Dollar Mindset, go to our website, MarlaTabaka.com. That's M-A-R-L-A-T-A-B-A-K-A.com. It's the Million Dollar Mindset with Marla Tabaka. Monday afternoons at 2, 1 p.m. Central on Toginet.com. It's time to awaken your creativity and unlock your greatness by listening to the Nancy Pristine Show every Thursday from noon to 2 Central Time on Toginet.com. Nancy is also known as the Happiness and Well-Being Ambassador. She's an award winning author and radio talk show host and every week on the nancy pristine show you'll hear tips stories and tested techniques from celebrities star athletes and executive business people people who have achieved greatness in their field everyone deserves the ultimate life and now you can create your own success story and achieve a brand new you by listening to the nancy pristine show the intent of the nancy pristine show is to give you everything you need for happiness well-being and success for more on nancy and the show check out her website Nancy Pristine. That's P R I S T I N E dot com. Then listen up. You will never settle for second best again. You're going to love the Nancy Pristine Show every Thursday from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Central Time on Toginet.com. Welcome back to the Coming Out Lounge with your host, Rick Clemens. 
And welcome back, everyone. Today, we're talking the legal ease of being an LGBT individual in today's society. I'm with my good friend, Eric A. Rudolph. But before we jump back in and start talking about revocable living trusts, I just want to tell you a little bit about next week's show. I've got a really powerful special gal coming on. Her name is Bonnie Gale. And how do I describe her? I'm going to just go right for it. Really raw. She is sex butter Bonnie, and she's a body liberation expert. Now, why would I bring that up? Because I think as we march towards National Coming Out Day, it's really important to realize as we come out of the closet, do we need sex butter? Sure. That's part of the fun. But what I really want to talk about is liberating ourselves into our bodies to really embrace and love ourselves in every sense as gays and lesbians. So that's what next week's show is about. It's going to be a great show, a lot of fun. We're going to get down, talk a little bit of sex stuff, but also talk about liberating ourselves into our sexuality. So before the break, Eric and I were talking about different things like durable powers of attorney and advanced health care directives. And I'm going to nut this down really quickly because I want to get right to some trust and some other great information that Eric has. But for me, knowing that my partner knows exactly what my wishes are in that hospital room if something happens to me, knowing that he has the power of attorney to make financial and medical decisions for me helps me, helps my children sleep at night. Now, here's the key that Eric and I haven't really touched on, but I'll lead with this because you do this once doesn't mean it's done things change in life so these are living breathing documents and if anything substantially changes in your life and eric you i know you'll correct me if i'm wrong it's really good to constantly and i don't mean constantly like every day but keep these things updated am i correct eric yes and it's very important to I think every two to three years, you want to review your estate planning documents and see if there are any significant changes. Obviously, if any major life events happen, if somebody passes away, if there's a divorce or disillusion, if a child is born or lost, a new generation comes into the family, those are times to really look at, at your estate planning documents and make changes. And you're right. These documents are living, breathing. They can always be amended and revised. I just want to caution, if you have a, a will or a trust prepared and it's executed in, in by, you know, by an attorney and it's done where it's properly witnessed and signatures and notaries, don't just strike things out and cross things out and write on them. That isn't valid. You have to right. have any amendments done in the same fashion that the originals were executed. So if the original was notarized, have an amendment notarized. Go to your attorney. Most attorneys don't charge a lot for amendments or changes or small revisions. And, and make sure to keep the documents up to date. And that's really important, especially if the person that you named to make the decisions for you predeceases you or the partner you thought you were spending the rest of your life with. You know, you hear about after 20 years, people go their separate ways. It does happen. That's when you want to look at your, your state planning documents. That's when you want to make changes and revisions and make sure that you, you, you know, you update things so that, if your person isn't your partner anymore, maybe now it's your sister or your brother, make those changes. Because if you don't, then the person you might even want once to make those decisions, they still are in charge. So it's really yeah. important to update and amend your, your estate planning document. Okay, so I know a lot for a lot of people, this is one of the ones that really kind of, okay, I don't understand it. I really want to understand it. In, you know, about four to five minutes, let's really, and I know that's like putting the pressure on, but what is a revocable living trust and what does it really do? Well, a revocable living trust is a, is a document. And a lot of people think it's something that has to actually be filed with the court. It's not. It's a document that is prepared by you and your estate planning attorney. You work together. And it is, um, it is, it is like a will, but it's, it doesn't go through probate. A will has to go through probate. If your estate is valued at more than $150,000, your state has to go through probate, which means it has to, the will has to be lodged at the court. The judge has to verify the will is valid. It's a public proceeding. There's, there's court records, and there's court fees and costs and attorney's fees, and it takes a lot longer to probate a will than it does to administer a trust. A trust is, is a private document, and it doesn't go through court. No judge has to validate it. It is administered by your trustee. You name a trustee, which is like your executor, and the trustee at the time when it's time to administer the trust, is then responsible for collecting your assets 
and I'm paying any debt, fees, taxes, taking care of all the administrative matters, notifying beneficiaries and heirs, and at some point, and it takes time, it doesn't happen right away, then make distributions and gifts to your beneficiaries and any charities. And it usually takes it can take six months to a year for a, a trust to be administered. But if a trust is properly set up and established, it, and if it's done and it's clear and it's clean and it's simple, you make the life of the people that are handling it afterwards so much easier. And that's yeah. what it's about. A trust is about protecting and taking care of and making life easier for the trustee, who often is your partner, your yeah. your sibling, your best friend, the person you yeah. trust most in the world, because you wouldn't want to name a trustee to someone you don't trust. got to be someone you right. trust, someone that you can rely on, who has some value when it comes to handling financial matters, someone who's hopefully geographically close. I never recommend naming a trustee who's across the other side of the country, unless it's a close family member you know will be here when they're needed, because Administering a trust takes a lot of work. It doesn't happen yeah. overnight. It's a six months to a year for the possibility for time in terms of getting it done. But if you have someone who you know you can trust, well, that's the number one decision that's hardest for people. Who am I going to pick as my trustee? Right. And, I, and I would bring up that I noticed this when my grandfather's trust came up. And because he had already appointed a trustee through his church and an actual company that administers these trusts, it brought up some negativity from some family members. And I just remember sitting there going, I'm just so glad this is done because that is exactly what can begin to happen. You know, if you, in my case, I have two girls. Now, the logic might say to most people, oh, appoint your oldest child to be the trustee. No, because oh, you man. never know when they're going to have a problem. And I love both my children. And I want them to not be burdened with this. And I want them to not have to be put in that position of duking it out, so to speak. So I think well, this is why things. when you bring that up about choosing someone that you truly trust Absolutely. is so vitally important. You can, there are ways to, to handle situations where you don't want to upset, especially when you have more than one child and you want them to feel equally loved and acknowledged. You can name co-trustees. There are pros right. and cons to naming co-trustees. The pro would be you don't offend anybody in your family if you have – we don't have more than two, maybe three. But if you have two or three children, that's the solution. However, when you have co-trustees, that means they all have to have a meeting of the mind. They all have to agree on things, and it can take a lot longer. I recommend one trustee, but I also recommend you want to name at least two, one or two successor trustees because right. – well, let me back up, because the person who establishes the trust is the trustee. In your lifetime, you are trustee, and this is a point that I think a lot of people don't understand, is when you create a trust while you're alive, you are in charge of the assets in the trust. It's your trust, they're your assets, it's revocable, so it can be amended and changed, or you can just revoke it all outright. But while you're alive, it's your trust and you're in charge. When you pass away, the first primary successor trustee then becomes the person in charge of administering your trust. Don't just name one, though. Name two or three, because yeah. in the event that the person in the primary person predeceases you, you want to make sure you have some contingency trustees, and they should be people you equally trust as your primary choice. And when it comes to naming your beneficiaries, they're in charge of making sure that the beneficiaries receive the gifts. So your beneficiary can, trustee can be a beneficiary. There's no problem with that. And it often is, especially when it's an adult child. But it's really important to make sure that you have contingencies, you have successor trustees, and even co-trustees can be a good way to go for some people. Well, and also, here's personal experience. Make sure they know. Now, this is an ironic, weird thing that happened, but my partner's mother passed back in November of last year. Okay. And he was set up as trustee, well, not even trustee, but Durable power of attorney, advanced health care, right. you know, all that stuff. Right. Unbeknownst to him, she had also made him all those things for her husband. And her husband has dementia, early stages of Alzheimer's. We did not know that any of this had been set up where my partner was going to be responsible for him. Well, of course, the husband has his own daughter. So this whole thing became a huge surprise. Now, luckily, it's worked out, but right. don't just designate somebody and then not tell them. No, it's you kind want of weird to, to do them. that. 
You want to talk to them before you designate them, before any yeah. documents are finalized. You want to talk to the people you're naming as trustees. You don't need to notify beneficiaries. That, right. that you don't need to do, but you absolutely must talk to and make sure that the people you name as trustee, executor, agent for health care, and attorney, in fact, for, for financial matters, they need to know and they need to agree and understand the responsibility they're taking on because it is a great responsibility. And you want to make sure they know what it is that they are agreeing to. And usually with close family and friends, obviously with partners, they're going to be there for you. And, and usually you shouldn't, you can't assume, but you, you know that, you know, they're going to step up when needed. But make sure they know that they've been named. Absolutely. And then if they agree, then you can talk about a little bit more about what it means to actually do that. Um, I did want to make one more point about uh, the revocable living trust, that uh, not everybody needs a trust, Rick. Uh, right. And a lot of times people are told, oh, I should have a trust. I've heard I should have a trust. They see something on TV or the Internet. Not everyone needs a trust. A trust is a much more expensive document to prepare than a will, and yeah. it takes a lot more time, and it's a, a lengthy legal document. And I, I talk to my clients, and we find out about their assets, their goals, their beneficiaries, their family, and I help guide them through the process as to, you know, do you need a trust? Because some people, the basic will is enough. And there are yeah. other ways to hold property besides um, in a will or trust, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, that right. can help you to avoid probate so you might not need a trust. Everyone needs but I a think will, that's not everyone point. needs a trust. Right, and this is a very valid point that you're bringing up. And we've got just about a minute before we go to break, but I think it's the perfect segue is – have these candid conversations with someone like you so that your attorney, the person helping you guide these decisions, knows everything that's going to be on the table so that you can make the right decisions and be guided forward. And I know that Eric's got a lot of things. We're going to kind of step into a new realm. We're going to go to break in about 30 seconds, and we're going to start talking about gay and lesbian couples, you know, now having children, what do you do with children when you're in a gay and lesbian relationship, married, not married, domestic partnership? What do you do with the family dog? What do you do for friends? And when we come back, we're going to get all into that in our last segment of the Coming Out Lounge as we talk about the legal ease of being a gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender in today's society. You've been listening to The Coming Out Lounge. A safe space to be you and your truth with coming out coach Rick Clements. We'll be right back after these messages. I look into the window of my mind. Attention parents and teachers. Here is a series of alarming yet true facts about the current state of teaching reading in the United States. The federal government has spent close to half a trillion dollars to improve reading ability, and yet we still have over 8 million students who cannot read on grade level. 440,000 students who have a total reading vocabulary of 50 words or less. And a national dropout rate of one new student every 26 seconds. Sadly, one of these could be yours. Fortunately, it's not too late to help. Introducing The Reading Show with Dr. Joe. A fast-paced, highly informative, easy-to-listen-to show led by nationally recognized reading authority, Dr. Joe Lakovich. For more on Joe on the show, check out his website, failurefreeonline.com. Listen in this week to learn amazingly simple ways to turn this problem around. The Reading Show with Dr. Joe. With your host, Dr. Joe Lakovich. Fridays at 10 a.m. Central on Toginet.com. Thursday nights, get ready for the Read My Lips Tips for Success radio show with your host, Linnea Millette, at 11, 10 Central on Toginet.com. What are the Read My Lips Tips for Success? Well, it's spelled out like this. R. Realize it is possible. E. Embrace all relationships. A. Advance through adversity. D. Develop your significance. M. Manage your health and wealth. Y. Yield to your natural abilities. L. Listen to your heart. I. Invest in yourself. P. Persist by taking small steps. And S. Serve others. Each week on the show, you'll find a safe haven whereby tips, insights, and strategies are shared by Linnea and her guests. Go to Linnea's website, readmylipstips.com. Then join us Thursday nights at 11, 10 p.m. Central for the Read My Lips Tips for Success radio show with your host, Linnea Millette on toginet.com. Welcome. 
Welcome back to the Coming Out Lounge with your host, Rick Clemens. All right, we are selling into the final segment of the Coming Out Lounge for Wednesday, September the 12th. And I am here with my friend, Eric A. Rudolph. And before I forget, Eric's website is RudolphLegal.com. Rudolph, just like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Legal.com. Powerful estate attorney, working with anyone, but specifically having some very good insights for the LGBT community. So right before the break, Eric, you had brought up some alternative forms of basically protecting yourself legally. We've talked about wheels. We've talked about estates. We've talked about healthcare directives. In a nutshell, in a minute or so, what are some of these alternate forms? There are other alternate forms to how you will hold assets, especially for gay and lesbian partners. If you own property together, you own your house together, it's really important to own it as joint tenants with right of survivorship. And in California, when you take title, make sure that you hold it as joint tenants when you purchase the property together. Now, if, if a partner owns property and then another partner comes in later on, you don't want to change title to joint tenancy without talking to an estate plan attorney first. There can be gift tax implications if you do that. But when you're buying property together, own it as joint tenants. It doesn't need to be part of a will or a trust. It doesn't go through probate. It passes to your partner um, by right of survivorship by operation of law. Another thing is if you have investment accounts, you want to make sure those are set up for transfer on debt designation or TOD designation. Talk yep. to your financial advisor. Make sure those accounts are set up for TOD designation. Your bank accounts can be set up for POD or pay on debt designation. Make sure those are set up and designate your partner. Designate the person you want receiving your, those funds when you pass. Much like joint tenancy, those do not go through probate and they can pass automatically to the beneficiary you want, kind of like a life insurance policy. When you name your beneficiary in a life insurance policy, it doesn't go through probate. It can just automatically go to that beneficiary. So setting up POD and POD accounts are really important. And if you have a life insurance policy, uh, make sure that your beneficiary designation is updated. And it's another point, like we were talking earlier about amending things, when you set up these accounts for TOD or POD and life insurance designation, make sure they're up to date. If the person passes away, predeceases you, or you are no longer with your partner, uh, make sure that you change it to update it to the person you want, because if you don't, then your ex could get it, or if there's person predeceases you, your estate would be the recipient, and then it does go through probate. So make sure you stay on top of that. Perfect. Okay, so we yeah, kind of covered state. the alternatives. Yeah, exactly. And you know, as we were talking earlier, one of the things that you kind of made me think about, which going back to when I first came out and then writing my own handwritten will, one of the things I put in my own handwritten will was exactly how I wanted my end of life to be taken care of. I wanted to be cremated. I wanted to be have the ocean service. I wanted white lilies thrown in the ocean. I wanted a certain song to be played. And okay. so how do those things get incorporated? It's really important to make sure the disposition of your remains is covered in your advanced health care directive. Uh, that's why I caution using the statutory forms of the hospital forms because they don't always take into account things like the music you want played, the flowers you want at your memorial. If you talk to an estate planning attorney, every detail can be spelled out, and it, that is usually covered in the advanced health care directive. There's usually a section for do you want to be buried, do you want to be cremated, and then just you know, make sure that you let them know. I, whether Some people don't want a, a memorial service, some people do, and it's your decision. It's kind of like the health care decisions. When it comes to the disposition of your remains, it's up to you. A lot of people want their ashes scattered over the ocean or in a national park or somewhere significant. And then they also want to make sure that when the time comes that their partner passes away, that there's, if sometimes they want to be in the same place, you know, or they want to be buried side by side, or they want to be cremated and have their ashes scattered in the same place. If you don't spell it out and the individual families are in charge of making those decisions, your wishes may not be respected. Okay. Okay. So that's really good. I just was something that crossed my mind and I want to make sure we brought that up. So let's kind of jump right in to some of the new twists and turns that legally gays and lesbians are facing who are starting families. What about children? What about guardianship? Yep. What about all those things? And that's really important to make sure that you name the guardians that you want raising your children in it. 
a will is the only way to name a guardian. This is one reason why even if you have a trust, you also want to have a will. There are other reasons that you also want to have a will, too, which you, when you meet with an estate planning attorney, they'll explain it. But one of the most important reasons if you have children is you need a will to name the guardian of your choice. And, and you want to make sure that, much like with naming a, a person for a power of attorney over your finances, talk to the people that you're going to name as the guardians of your children. And, you know, this is true of gay and straight couples who have children, but it's important for gay people because sometimes the families don't get to know each other, and they're separate families of the two partners, and it's, it, there isn't the cohesiveness that sometimes there is with, with traditional straight married couples. And so you can have battles for guardianship when suddenly, you know, God forbid you both pass at the same time, a plane goes down, a car accident, suddenly you've got two separate families fighting over to raise children. You don't want that. It's, it's an ugly scene for the children. Have it spelled out in your wills, but make sure that you and your partner have reciprocal wills when it comes to naming guardians. You don't want conflicting designations. You want to make sure that you both named that, you know, you, you've decided that one of your, you know, one of them, your sister and her husband are going to raise your children. You know, we'll make sure you spell it out and you want to have everything be really specific. And the more specific the designation of the guardianship is in your will, the, the better it is when it comes time, if a judge has to decide, they're going to honor the wishes, but make sure those wishes aren't conflicting because that's when the court's going to end up making a decision. You don't want a judge you've never met deciding who's going to raise your children. You want to make that decision with your partner and make sure you put it in a will that is properly executed and enforceable in California. Absolutely. Okay, so we've seen that that's where you put this. Now, some people may laugh when I'm about to say this, but... Gays and lesbians, not that heterosexuals don't, but a lot of gays and lesbians, their children are their pets. So what do you do yep. with them? Well, pets are a little bit different. Unfortunately, in the eyes of the law, dogs and cats are considered property. They're not considered, they're not on the same level with children. Uh, but to most people, they are their children, like you were saying, Rick. So you want to make sure that you provide for your pet in that if you predeceased your pet and you want to make sure Fido or Fluffy is going to be taken care of by a family member or a friend, someone you trust. Now, if your partner survives you, it's usually the partner is going to take care of the, your dog or cat. But in the event that you're a single person or your partner's already predeceased you, you want to make sure that you have, you know, a sister, a brother, a friend, someone who you know is going to come, out, come along and make sure that your dog or cat is taken care of. You can create pet trust. That is a valid legal trust that can be created by an estate planning attorney, which can provide for your pet in terms of their care, feeding, vet bills, make sure that there's some money provided. Some people usually leave an allowance. Uh, you know, we all heard the story of Leona Helmsley, who left a lot of money to her pet. Well, that's not what it would be like. It's, it's more about making sure that there is money to take care of your pet for the care and feeding of your pet. And you can do that in a pet trust that will survive as long as your pet survives. And it basically gives an allowance to the caregiver of your pet to make sure that they're not having to pay out of their own pocket to take care of your dog or cat. But it makes sure that your pet is taken care of pretty much for the quality of life that you've given your pet and while you were alive. And I think that's what most people want. They want to make sure that their dog and cat can be comfortable, loved, taken care of. Well, you better spell it out. And it can be done in a will or a trust. And it's, it's really important, though, to make sure that it is put down in writing because Otherwise, if you don't, you really think that your family members are going to want to take the money you have to take care of your pet when it could go to them. And you can't count on that. That's why you got to put it in writing. All right. And I think really as we are getting close, I know we've got about four, three, four minutes left to go, but this is what it's all about is putting – I hate the term putting it in writing, <laughs> but it is what needs to be done, you know. Yeah. And I, I guess just my perspective would be – as a gay and lesbian individual, I have fought so hard, as m many of us do and most of us do, to become authentically me and to have the life that I know is truly who I am. I would be doing myself an injustice, my significant other if I'm in a relationship, and quite honestly, even my family and friends an injustice if I did not take the steps necessary to ensure that all this is taken care of and ready in the moment that I might lose my life. And that's just it. You know, we, we work so hard to build our, our life, our assets, to own our home, 
And, and you know, gay and lesbian couples work even harder. We, we don't have the federal tax advantages that straight people have. And so there are things that we have to do, and, and you want to protect that. You, and you want to protect your legacy. And that's why it's so important to put it in writing and, and make sure that what you want is honored. Make sure that there's, if there's specific gifts that you want to make sure people have, you know, it's, if you don't put it down in writing, someone else is going to decide. It's like when a library burns down, we, we lose all those books. We lose all those memories. We, you know, if you, if you take the time to let people know what's important to you, why it's important to you, what you want to pass on. And, yeah. and it's so important because families of gay and lesbian couples don't always know what's really important. We have relationships with our friends. We have charities that are important to us. We right. have relationships that are not traditional. And you have to make sure that what you want and why you want it, why you want to leave money to a certain charity that's important to you. You know, it might not be important to your family, but it's important to you and it's important to your partner. Make sure that's included in your will or trust. Talk to Absolutely. And I think that is the key, Eric. I, I'm writing? so glad you just said that because as long as it's in there, but it also validates that you were of sound mind and judgment when you said, I want this money to go to Free to Love or HRC or Desert AIDS Project, whatever it may be, because yeah. of X, Y, Z. It cannot be disputed. It, there is no disputing it. It's in there. It's written. And it is part of who you were, part of who you were alive, and now part of who your legacy is. So we're coming into sure the last you... two minutes, and I would really like you to just, like, really give us those last couple of quick things. Actually, we're in the one minute. So what's one okay, thing right. you would just recommend real quick? Real quick, make sure that you take care of these matters while you're in your right mind, while you're healthy, while you aren't under stress. And because the issues that often come up for challenging things are whether you had the capacity to do it, whether there was fraud, whether there was undue influence. You want to make sure that you show the, that you were clear when you were making these decisions, when you were putting everything in writing, and then make sure that everything is properly executed under the laws in California. It's not yeah. enough just to put it in writing, but make sure it's properly executed. I always recommend have these documents notarized, make sure they're properly witnessed and signed, and then when, once they're done, keep them in a safe place. Make sure the people who are, need to know know and keep them in a safe deposit box or a fireproof safe because the original someday can be important. But just Absolutely. Get it. Okay, we're going to have to go, Eric, but you just nailed it on the head. I loved having you. We'll have to do this again. Thanks for being here. And everyone, step out, step up, and step into living your powerful truth each and every day. See you next week. Thank you for joining us today with the Coming Out Lounge with your host, Rick Clements. Make sure you tune in with us next week, same time, same place, for the Coming Out Lounge.